SH is to identify and avoid operating conditions that could lead to vaporization of fluid. Now there's two main ways to look at this, theoretically and practically. Now, we're not gonna cover the same principles as we did in understanding system curves, but pressure needs to be considered. First of all, let's look at the three different states of fluids. It can be a solid, like ice, liquid, like water, or gas, like steam. Now, when looking at different states of fluids against temperature and liquid pressure, this can be called the phase diagram. What this shows is for standard atmospheric pressure, which is one bar absolute, as we increase the temperature, the fluid can change from ice to water and then gas. However, the diagram also shows that liquid can boil without changing the temperature. If we reduce the liquid pressure, the liquid will start to effectively boil and form vapor pockets. This is called cavitation. Cavitation in itself is not necessarily an issue. What is an issue is when we increase the pressure and we turn the fluid from gas back into liquid. This diagram shows the state of vapour bubbles. For a fixed temperature, as the pressure drops, the vapour bubbles are formed. As the pressure increases, the vapour bubbles implodes and send a jet of energy back into the liquid, of which, if next to a surface, it can easily damage the surface. Here are just a couple examples of what cavitation has caused to pumps. So let's have a look at what's happening inside the pump. As liquid enters into the pump, the liquid pressure has a quick drop from behind the impeller for a raising pressure is created from the front of the impeller. Now let's assume the liquid is fixed at 15 degrees centigrade. In a submersible application where the liquid level is high, there is more pressure on the suction side and therefore the drop in pressure is not much of a concern. However, when the pump needs to do a suction lift or has a lot of friction or velocity within the suction pipe work, you can see that the pressure drop reaches the vapor pressure. And as we know, this is when cavitation occurs. The size of the pressure drop varies from impeller to impeller and is subject to flow rate, which brings us on to the MPSH curve. As we've seen before, the pump curve is made up of four different sections which give key information on the performance of the pump, but one of the curves is the MPSH R. Now MPSH is the net positive suction head available minus the net positive suction head required. MPSH A is made up of the pump suction side static head velocity and friction head at a given flow rate, and the atmospheric pressure. MPSHR is what the manufacturer curve illustrates for your given flow rate. To avoid cavitation across the pump, the MPSH must be positive across all required flow conditions. 